is up and welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be working on the air compressor again and instead of working on it we're actually just going to see what this 10 pound husky sledgehammer can do to it because I've had it, I'm done, I've fixed it three times and three times it's broken and they've all been separate pieces so obviously this thing is past its useful lifespan and it's time to send it to the junkyard. So real quick, we're going to talk about all the things that's going on with it, what we've had to do to diagnose it, because I'm one of those people that I like to know what the problem is. So if you've seen my two other previous videos, we've replaced the check valve in this that basically traps the air in the tank as the pump pumps it into the tank and stores it. The other video was a contact replacement, which basically tells the motor when to turn off and turn on, which turns the pump on, which pumps air into the tank. So we've replaced both of those pieces in the past. If you want to check those videos out, click the link up above. Uh, if not, we're going to be talking about what today's video is about, which is basically my curiosity to figure out what happened to this air compressor once again and why it's not working properly yet once more. All right, so while this thing was running, I could hear uh, what sounded like either a belt slipping, which the belt does vibrate quite a bit as this thing is running. So I thought it may be that, or the bearings in the back of the electric motor. It just sounded like a constant squeal. So I started looking into the problem and I put a temp gun on the tops of the heads of the cylinders and these both were running right where they needed to be around 140 degrees Fahrenheit and then you get to this one over here and you can see I've already taken the head off of it and basically this one was over 200 degrees so I knew the problem was in this cylinder head itself I knew the piston was working because it was creating a whole bunch of heat and it just wasn't pumping air now to get this thing apart all you have to do is take off these four bolts right here and then this whole assembly comes off. You do have on this one, you have the actual air hose that goes plumbed straight hard pipe in. So you might have to take these two connections off. But on the other one that I actually removed, all you have is this swivel connection. So it comes off really easy. This is where your intake filter would be. I've gone ahead and it looks just like this when it's closed. This is where the filter sits and then the cap goes on top. We're gonna go ahead and pull off this filter, set it aside. And then we're gonna pull off the base just so I can show you what this head looks like in its components. This is your intake valve right here on the top of the head. And this is where air would be sucked in. It goes through a plate, which is right here. You can see the gaskets, one right there and then one right there. This right here is a reed plate and it basically just lets air in one way and not out the other. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. But what was happening on this cylinder this is supposed to just simply suck air in and it was actually sucking air in and blowing it out. So I knew that there was something in the revalve setup that had failed. So again, curiosity got the best of me and I pulled the head off to see if it was something we could actually fix or if this thing does indeed need to be taken to the scrap heap. Over here on the table itself, we've got the four head bolts with their lock washers. And then we have the reed plate. We'll talk about that in a second and then the actual top part of the head. So this is what you would typically see on the compressor, just like I showed you over there. And then this is the fitting that has the swivel connection that you just undo. Take the four bolts off, pop this off with a dead blow hammer or a rubber mallet. It comes off fairly easy to clean everything up on the inside. And then this is what we want to get to. This is a reed valve setup. Typically these will fail and bend open. Um, but as you can see, this is the exhaust, this is the intake. And all this thing does is sit on top of here. And there's a little gasket that goes in between it. So you have your intake on this side and your exhaust on this side. And it sits like that on the actual compressor with the piston being mating to this side. So as the piston goes down, it draws air into this, opens up this reed valve right here. And then as the piston comes up, it closes this reed valve and forces pressure in through these two ports right here, which has a reed valve on the other side, which does the same thing and basically traps that high pressure compressed air onto the exhaust side. Once that goes through, it goes to your outlet, which goes to your next cylinder and so on and so forth until it gets into the tank. I had thought this 
part had probably failed. I thought the reed valves had probably broken and I was gonna be looking at buying this entire piece. Upon disassembly, the only thing I found was a bad gasket. So once again, this just proves that sometimes you just need to take things apart and be a little curious and find out what's causing it to fail instead of sending it off to be made into beer cans. That sits right there, this sits on top, and like I said, the piston would be on this side. Pulled this off, saw the broken gasket, went ahead and ordered a new one. So we're just gonna slap that bad boy on, put these two parts together, and see if we can't get this compressor back in action. So all we're gonna do right here is look at our exhaust revalve, and we're gonna match it to our exhaust outlet, and we're gonna put it right there and now this thing is pretty much ready to be reinstalled we'll drive two bolts up through just to help locate everything and keep the gasket centered and then we're going to take this whole assembly back over to the air compressor and reinstall it now i've taken the time to protect the piston while i was working on all this and i just shoved a shop rag in there i cleaned everything out best i could and if you notice there is another gasket right here i'm not sure if you can see that with the light but there is another rubber gasket just protecting all of that and making sure all that seals as well. That one's in good shape so we didn't have to replace it and now we're just gonna stick on the head. Now all we have to do is take our half inch wrench and torque the bolts to spec. First time around, we're gonna to torque them to 15 foot pounds and then our final torque is gonna be anywhere from 25 to 30 foot pounds. We're going to go ahead and retorque all of the original bolts that we haven't removed the head on just to make sure that that's not the reason the head gaskets are blowing in the first place. Make sure the bolts aren't loosening up and causing the gasket to blow out. I did get some of the other bolts to actually tighten up right around between 1 8th and 1 quarter of a turn. So they are loosening up. They're all retorqued to 25 foot pounds. We're going to hook this thing up and turn it on and make sure she works properly. where everything is snugged up, all the pipes are connected, the only thing left to do now is hook up the base of the air cleaner connector. While we're busy doing a little bit of maintenance on it, I went ahead, since I had to order a gasket anyway, and I ordered three new intake filters. Now before I get all this closed up, I just want to make sure that that fix did actually correct the problem. So we're going to go ahead and kick this thing on and make sure the intake is only doing what it's supposed to do, which is sucking air in. Success! And it was just that quick and just that easy. The gasket did fix the problem, so now we're gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up and make sure she builds pressure all the way to 150 PSI. Before when it was running, we would stall out right around 50 to 75 PSI, 
and it wouldn't build any more pressure than that when it was running. Uh, and again, that's because this cylinder right here was not actually building any pressure. It was just, as the piston went up and down, it was blowing air in and out. It comes out of this tube, goes down through our check valve, and then you store pressure in your storage tank. So that process can't really occur with only two cylinders operating. And again, it did sound like a bearing had gone bad in the electric motor, so I was looking at possibly replacing that and or the belt was loose and causing a squeal. Some of the secondary symptoms, aside from me figuring out that air was coming in and out, was this cylinder was way hotter, well over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and if you run it for extended periods of time, there's a chance you could burn out the cylinder liner and or the rings and have to get a lot more involved with the rebuild process. For those of you wondering, you can get replacement parts for this air compressor. You're not going to find them most likely at Home Depot, which is where you purchase the compressor. Uh, they're simply a retail outlet and they're not in the business of selling you parts to fix your old equipment. So you will have to go to an appliance shop, either online or locally, and source these parts. Uh, I was able to source everything either through homedepot.com or fix.com. There's some other appliance repair websites that you can go check out on your own. None of them are helping sponsor this video. I make absolutely no dollars or cents off recommending any of these choices. So I would just recommend shopping around, finding the cheapest parts you can. All that it took to fix this was just the gasket. That was all that was wrong with it. So before you get ready to drop your broken shop stuff into the scrap pile and get toted off and make beer cans out of it, take it apart, see what's wrong with it and see if it can be fixed. In most scenarios, catastrophic failures aren't catastrophic uh, unless you hear grinding or see something come flying off. And even then, you can buy replacement jugs and pistons and rings and cranks and rods and all this other stuff to completely rebuild this thing. It becomes a question of, is it worth the time and money? You can buy this whole pump for about 300 bucks and you can buy that whole motor, the electric motor, for about the same money. So if you had to replace these two parts, you're only $200 away from buying a whole new air compressor. Most people would rather do that than to learn how to use a wrench and or a socket to fix what they already have at a much cheaper cost. Again, I've already fixed this check valve. I've already fixed the contactor in previous videos and now we fixed the gasket. The gasket was about 22 bucks uh, plus shipping and then I got three new filters for it. I have, again, less than $55 in this whole fix this time. So in all the fixes combined, I still think we're way money ahead by only spending 150 bucks to get this air compressor back up and running until it breaks again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a quick and easy fix, and that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you liked it, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you haven't already done so, please click that subscribe button. A little bell is gonna pop up right next to it. Go ahead and select that, click all. That way you get notified of all the videos we post just as soon as they go live. We appreciate all the love and support. And until next time, thank you so very much for watching this video.